And I have to admit, I've come here today to learn. Um, and after that last presentation, I realized that now I, have, I know who to learn from. Um, quite remarkable what's been achieved in Rwanda. Um, so um, I'm going to give, a, give, a, give a, a, a perspective from a, a bilateral donor from the UK, um, drawing on a, a few points. And thanks very much to the organizers for asking me to come along. Um, I thought I'd start by saying, well, who pays, but who pays for what? And just break it down a little bit, um, because I think it is quite it's quite important about who can actually resource different aspects to a sort of major scale up of the things that you're talking about today. Um, when it comes to innovation, I think um, it's everyone's responsibility to pay for innovation, whether in the private sector or public sector, NGOs, foundations. I mean, it's just good practi management practice to look for new ideas and get behind the best ideas. And so I think it's a sort of a general sort of rule that innovation that everyone should be paying for. Um, and this is just one example of, a, of a, an initiative, which I'm sure you all know better, not better than myself, MPISA program in, in Kenya, where DFID was involved in some catalytic funding early on, which led to something which has become quite major. And when it gets to the next step of looking for um, feasibility, again, I mean, I think there's a wide number of people who should be looking at, well, what the good idea is what's the next step, what is feasible, what's, what could be scaled up to a much larger uh, uh, for a much larger impact. Um, and again, um, a wide number of people, I mean, ideally government if they have the resources, but certainly with the people working with government foundations, international development partners, as well as the private sector, looking for those sort of business models that are gonna work on, on a larger scale. Again, everyone's responsibility, and an example here that, that I found very interesting, I'm sure it should be discussed um, at the conference about um, uh, support to community health workers in, in, in South Africa. But then you get on to, well, uh, once you, the discussion is you're beginning to have today, but who now is going to scale um, from the, the major scale up? Um, who's going to go from this, sort of what's feasible, the pilots look good, we're getting some good results, how do we go to, to, to scale? And what's the, uh, the possible sources there, in the, particularly in the, in, in the developing world? Um, and I'd just like to sort of say, well, it's not always um, as, um, as, 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 as obvious as you may seem. This is, I mean, obviously, the, uh, for somewhere, uh, an area we're looking for new, uh, new, new technology and sustainable sort of business models into the future. Um, there may be sort of the private sector is where you should be looking in the longer term. I mean, this is a slide which just shows how things are changing rac rapid, quite rapidly over the last sort of 20 years, where previously the black line at the bottom is overseas development assistance. This is sort of the funds, that, this is the, the, the DFID sort of funds and the bilateral funds that come from the World Bank or bilateral programs. And as years have gone by, um, it's become you know, relatively small compared to the red line, which is the, the foreign direct investment from um, private sector investments. And clearly this is quite a trend that I imagine is going to continue. And it also has implications for the way that we use our money. I mean, someone like DFID um, is looking for innovative ways of catalyzing change. I mean, this, this, this meeting here today is a great example of using the sort of, you know, you, know, you, you don't run a whole program to a bilateral program, but you can catalyze conferences, you can convene, you can get research discussed. And I think this increasingly on the bilateral front, this is where a lot of the funds will be going. Well, obviously governments, I mean, we were talking about public health, there's gonna be huge market failures. Um, um, no one's expecting the private sector can fund a lot of, a lot of this. And whether it's to, um, to actually enable own uh, public sector providers or to look at developing standards or research, then governments are gonna um, pay a, have to pay a major role. Um, but with, even within Africa now, um, you're looking at 70% of, of countries have a growth of more than 4%. And so a lot of these countries should be in investing in their, in, in their future in a much larger scale than perhaps they have done with, uh, with some obviously uh, um, sort of positive case studies like in Rwanda. Um, but many countries not investing in their future in the same way. And, and then, and then with, a with, a, with a good growth rate, good to say growth rate, that's, that's perhaps inexcusable. And then when you look to international finances, whether it's um, private or public through ODA, I mean, the world is, is, ch is changing quite remarkably. And uh, whereas previously, I mean, this is a slide that has, sh tries to show you know, GDP, you know, the, the size of the blobs, uh, the size of GDP. Um, and you can see that, well, in the previous ODA providers, you, traditionally sort of North America um, and Europe and Japan, 
um, and they rightly were, were had quite larger uh, amounts of ODA and development assistance. But now we have major new players in the block, um, India and China, and they are growing. And I was just reading just recently how the, even the, in, the Indian development assistance to Africa is growing remarkably fast. I mean, coming from a small start, but it's growing massively. And so I think even when it comes to international assistance around development, both public and private, the world is changing. And I think everyone should be sort of um, picking up on that and looking for the, the opportunities. And then just a few sort of personal um, points I thought I'd throw in um, um, about um, ways of getting money out of donors like um, DFID. Well, don't undermine, uh, don't um, lose the emphasis on political capital, getting sort of our sort of sort of politicians and champions in, in, um, to get behind initiatives. And it was great to see in this uh, report that was commissioned by the Secretary General last September, um, where he, uh, the Commission on Information and Accountability for Women and Children's Health, which has just uh, published a report in, in May. It was very good to see that there's a, there's a recommendation around innovation and a call for all countries to have ICT at the center of its health information sort of strategies. And, and it'd be good to see that you, people like yourselves are advocating around and health to get sort of the, the text into these documents so the champions that we that support our policies can actually get behind what you need to you want to deliver. Second thing which I think Heine uh, gave a very nice um, uh, a discussion on, led a discussion on about um, the need, need to focus on results and outcomes. Um, this is a slide from internal management about how DFID can um, use its funds, whether it's you know, chunks of money to governments at one end on this end, or whether it's payment for you know, vouchers to, to uh, health workers at the other, or, or for women using facilities at the other. But they're all a link to results and outcomes. All of these have to have arguments about how much money gives how much out, outcome, how, how, how many services are improved, um, what outcomes are delivered, Arguments have to be sort of, that's how, um, that's how decisions are made about allocation of funds. And no matter what initiative you're doing, you have to have come up with these arguments of cost per case saved or, 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 or illness prevented. Absolutely key now to all decision making. And, and building on that, there's also the, uh, every uh, business case we do now has to have a very strong value for money um, uh, uh, section. We have to show that this investment is much better than those other three or four investments that we could have made. Value for money is critical now to um, uh, thinking with a post-financial or financial crisis and, and the problems that we have around international money. But there's a good side to that, is that we're also told that, well, if results aren't clear yet, it's very, very promising. It was like the things that I'm hearing today. I mean, very, very promising, but we haven't quite got the science there yet. Then we can invest in the science. We can invest in good evaluations, um, good research, um, get independent assessments of what's going on. And that is very, very powerful arguments now. Um, and again, all the, in, in these areas that are growing where there's huge potential, we're in a great position now to invest in high quality, high quality research. And then just a couple of uh, points um, to, to uh, as I was flicking through the, um, the, the internet, um, I was quite taken by the fact about how in some of the countries that are a bit more advanced in their sort of information systems. And the whole issue of privacy and confidence is key. And I, and I heard that was mentioned earlier on. Um, and then lastly, um, something again, me who doesn't know much about this area, but something that we're very, very concerned about is just the whole issue of risk. I mean, are we investing in things that may just fail? And it, when you mention uh, ICT to most governments, they shake because the potential to lose huge amounts of money is there. Now, obviously, you're talking about M Health and mobile phone. It's a very different sort of technology. But even so, to many people, they will see huge risks there. And I think you're going to have to make a strong case to say that this, that, that we are, we're looking at the risks. We are admitting to the defeats, the failures. We're not trying to hide them. They're going to pull them out and learn from them. Because that way, the risks will be managed, and you'll make the case a lot, lot stronger. And this slide here is actually from a, um, an HMO in, in the US, which I found quite kind of interesting. When even this is only, a, I think, a year or so ago, where they're again making the point that um, you can get burned by investments in technology if you're not careful, and you must be very careful what you want to want to deliver, measure it carefully, evaluate, keep on reviewing your plans. And these are in sort of countries like um, Europe and the US that have been investing in, in IT and ICT for many years. So I think it's something we all have to sort of take into consideration. And when you're making cases for money, make sure that these risks are very well sort of managed and, um, and articulated. 
So thank you very much, and I look forward to the discussion.